Angry Old Veteran versus 700 Red Coats. Samuel Whitmore. From the title, this sounds super interesting. I'm how one guy is going to take on 700 Red Coats. Really looking forward to jumping into this one. Before we do, like 80% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel. If you're one of the 80%, I appreciate if you hit that subscribe button down below. Yeah, let's jump into this to check this out. Ah, uh, yes, the official state hero of Massachusetts. Bro, this is getting mad. With Samuel Whitmore, quite possibly America's first anti-hero and the most gangster old man of all time. All right, Samuel Whitmore, we don't know much, but here's what we do know. He was born in Charlestown, Massachusetts in 1696. From right. there, he goes dark. We don't hear from him until 1721 when he gets married to his wife, Elizabeth Spring. Then uh. he goes dark again. There's nothing of him in the historical record until 1744. At the age of 48 years old, he would fight in King George's War. And during that war, he held the rank of captain, leading an entire platoon of dragoons during the siege of Loisburg. If you don't know, dragoon is just a fancy word for cavalry. So think of like Malfoy's dad, from the Patriot, same thing. <laughs> so that's cool, whatever, but here's the important part that nobody else ever brings up. Like I said, he's a captain, which is a way bigger deal than most people make it out to be. And here's right. why, there's really only two ways that you can become an officer in the British military at this point in time. Way number one, you were born into a wealthy British aristocratic family and daddy's got a lot of money. That's like 95% of the British officers at this point in time. Or way number two and way way less likely you are a complete badass doing gangster shit on the regular and they absolutely <laughs> need you to lead some men given the right. fact that samuel's just some random colonial that was born in massachusetts it kind of narrows down which category he fell into so he and his <laughs> men help lay siege to fort lewisburg that goes well they take over the fort. yeah he's definitely in the category we ain't we even heard the story yet but the badass bad that, that's what he's gonna be the badass category from this title it looks like anyway from there the war is over so he heads back home to what is now arlington massachusetts from there, he goes back to doing seemingly the only other thing he's good at, because I'm not kidding you, this guy does two things his entire life. He plows stuff, and he fights wars. When he's not <laughs> okay. fighting wars, he's back at home, plowing his fields, and plowing his wife, because this dude has <laughs> ten kids. I am not ten. kidding you, there's only two things on the historical record that even prove that this man existed for the next what? ten years. One is the sheer amount of birth certificates where he is listed as the father. Oh, I mean, the mother is always his wife, he's not cheating on his wife, it's just they're having a bunch of kids. And second, and my most favorite detail of this entire story when he came back from war he had a very very decorative ornate almost gaudy french officer sword covered in gold and rhinestones Yo. and jewels and all kinds of shit and it became his prized possession that he would show off to all of his buddies in town and when they would ask him where on earth he got that the only thing he would say is and i quote the previous owner died suddenly <laughs> fucking i acquired it all right so fast forward 10 years Alright, so now he's like 50 summer. Alright. Hey. It is now 1754, and Attila the Whitmore over here is approximately 58 years old, and the French and Indian War breaks out. Now, does Sam have to go fight this war? Absolutely not. He is a 58-year-old man in the 1700s when the life expectancy is 60. He should be killing over oh, wow. any minute now, but he also has 10 kids, so he's literally like, um, <laughs> honey, I gotta go beat up the French again. Okay, bye. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? He's like, hey, hey, I'm up to now. Looking after 10 kids or gonna fight a war in 58? Ah, I'm gonna fight the war, man. That's sick. Oh, he's up as well. If you don't know, the French and Indian War is basically the Kingdom of France versus the British Empire, and both sides are backed by different Native American tribes. This right. is supposedly the war that Mel Gibson's character fought in in The Patriot, and presumably where he got his cool tomahawk from. Now, I know what you're thinking. Did Sam Whitmore get a cool tomahawk too? No, no he didn't. But what he did get was two matching dueling pistols that were super cool. And you're never going to believe this, but the previous owner died suddenly. Okay, <laughs> look, it's not stealing if they don't exist anymore. That's just the rules, I guess. So Sam and his men beat up on the French yet again. He acquires some fancy dueling pistols and then he heads back home. Okay, fast forward again. Right. Nah, he is that I. Oh, it wow. He, he's a, he surpassed the, uh, the age the age capacity of the human life. 1763 and Sam Whitmore is 67 years old and the Pontiac wow. Rebellion breaks out. Surely he's going to sit this one out, right? Absolutely not. He grabs his French sword. He grabs his double dueling pistols, his musket, and he heads off to war 
yet again. So he goes, bro, he this guy just likes collecting his items that he's getting every time he's going out to uh, these wars, man. Fights in that war for a little bit, comes back home, at which point he decides that he's going to get involved in politics. So somewhere along the line, he starts rolling around in the political circles. He finds himself at a fancy dinner party, and there's this guy there that's running for House of Representatives, and his name is John Vassal, and he represents everything that Sam hates. Sam is a small town farmer that's just trying to plant his crops and bang his wife and this guy is like the big powerful merchant at living Boston, life in the big city running the ports making all this money he wants to get into office right make laws more beneficial to him so he can be rich and sam is just trying to get by so at this dinner party sam who's not scared of anybody informs him hey by the way you're no better suited for office than the horse i rode in on by the way my horse's <laughs> name is nero he's parked out front and he's not worth five pounds which i'm not an expert in translating old-timey colonial speak but it sounds like he's saying you're not worth a horse's ass. Yeah. Go fuck yourself. Yeah, pretty point, much. John Vassal gets very upset and decides that he is going to sue Sam for public defamation for the price of 1,000 pounds, which is a shit ton of money back then. So yeah, I wonder what the equivalent of 1,000 pounds is nowadays. That'd be a lot, wouldn't it? Well, the entire town finds out about this lawsuit and they all show up to court to actually watch the trial because Sam represents that grizzled old man that's just saying what's on everybody's mind, but nobody else has the balls to say. And right. he goes in and basically turns this entire trial into the roast of John Vassal. <laughs> Ends up winning, <laughs> Sam doesn't get sued, at which point he slaps him with a counter lawsuit on the no spot. Way counter suing him for $200 and wins so that kind of launches Sam's hey let's go sub. fast forward again Two years. It's now 1765 and the British Empire has been fighting France for quite a while and it's getting expensive. They need to make more money and the best thing they can come up with is the Stamp Act. Basically, they're going to charge the colonials a tax on every single printed piece of paper that they come up with. This is okay. like the modern day equivalent of if every time you made a phone call, sent a text, or visited a website, you had to pay a tax for it. Right. People are absolutely outraged and Sam is infuriated. I mean, from his point of view, he's been fighting the French for for the British Empire and now he's gonna have to pay an extra tax just for doing it he is so mad that he ends up becoming a hardcore Yikes. revolutionary but he's also like a 70 year old man so he's mostly just serving on committees being like hey maybe America should be its own country we shouldn't pay so much in taxes yada 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 fast forward again eight years later it is now 1773 Samuel Wilkes. man he's, he's getting on now isn't he He's getting on. Moore is a 75-year-old man, and the 75. British government has just rolled out their new and improved strategy for making even more money, the Tea Act. Yeah, they're going to start taxing the importation of tea, oh, I've which heard will about go this. down in history as one of the greatest ideas of all time. Now, at this point, Sam is serving on a committee. Yo, Sam's going to be fuming, man. Sam's going to be... I'm, like, fuming for him, and I'm British, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was fighting for the Brits, and now the Brits are like, hey... Boom, tax on all this. Thank you for fighting for us, man. Representing his hometown of Cambridge, which would later become known as Arlington. And that committee sends a response to the British government in regards to the Tea Act that basically says, fine, if you're going to charge us more money, we're just not going to buy your tea because, and I quote, right. if we fail to assert our rights, we will dwindle into supineness. Now, like I said earlier, not an expert in translating old time <laughs> colonial talk, but it means. sounds like Sam and his committee just told the British government that we're not going to buy your metric leaf water right. because we're not going to let you guys fuck us. That's why. At this point, pretty much everybody in America is pissed off. They start smuggling tea to avoid taxes. The Boston Tea Party <laughs> happens December 1773. From there, people just start stockpiling guns and gunpowder and supplies getting ready for war oh wow break out now fast forward april 1775 Over general tea. thomas gage is appointed the military governor of massachusetts and he will be residing in boston which has been turned into a british military stronghold at that point general gage decides hey you know what i'm gonna get proactive i'm gonna stomp out this whole rebellion talk right here and right now i'm gonna take 700 men an entire uh -oh. regiment and I'm gonna march them out uh -oh. to Lexington and Concord. While they're in Lexington, they're gonna arrest those stupid, annoying revolutionaries, John Hancock and Samuel Adams, and then they're gonna continue marching to Concord where they're gonna burn down all the stocked up military supplies. Yo. So the British military starts making preparations for a huge movement, at which point revolutionary spies find out and they decide to let everybody know. And when I say they decide to let everybody know, I mean a silversmith from Boston by the name of Paul Revere is gonna take off at midnight, right? through the entire countryside going house to house telling everybody that the british are coming and guess whose house is between boston and lexington 
Sam Whitmore's. Sam motherfucking Whitmore. That's who. I'm not shitting you. It is like 99% sure that Paul Revere showed up at 78 year old Samuel Whitmore's house no sometime way. in the middle of the night and was like, hey, just letting you know, the British are coming. At which point he's like, get off my lawn. <laughs> then presumably Paul Revere is like, okay, whatever. I got to go warn everybody else. And Samuel goes back to bed. That morning, April 19th, 1775, the British are marching and they're almost to Lexington and they are cut off by 77 Minutemen led by a man by the name of John Parker. John Parker uh, John? orders the Minutemen to quote, stand your ground, don't fire unless fired upon, but if they mean to have war, let it begin here. So the British roll up with 700 trained professional soldiers and tell these 77 Minutemen, literally farmers that just picked up whatever guns they had around and told them, disperse you rebel scum. At which point the Minutemen are like, Nah, we're good. We're going to stay right here, and so are you. And that's exactly what happens. They just stand there staring at each other from across this field with the British officer not knowing what to do because he has to get to Concord to get rid of these supplies because those... Yeah, this is kind of like, what do you do in that situation? Because nobody's actually going to want to fire on anyone. But I'm guessing Samuel... The angry old veteran is gonna is, is he gonna come guns blazing? Like what is he gonna do, bro? Threaten him? For his orders, but he also doesn't want to open fire on these guys because that will mean the start of the Revolutionary War. Right. So they just stood there, seemingly forever, in formation, ready to throw down, waiting for the other guy to make the first move. And suddenly from the American side, a gun goes off. Nobody knows who fired, nobody knows why, but this was the shot heard around the world that would start the American Revolution. And for all oh, we wow. know, it could have been some old farmer that just dropped his gun. It probably was. <laughs> From there, all hell breaks loose. Both sides fire on each other. Eight oh, American wow. Minutemen are killed and the British advance towards Concord. The surviving Minutemen take off to go tell everybody that the Revolutionary War has officially begun wow. as the British spend the next four hours searching through Concord, gathering all the military supplies and lighting them on fire. Everybody in the surrounding area sees all the smoke from the burning supplies and they think that the British military is burning down the entire town of Concord. Because of that, 2,000 Minutemen show up to fight back, at which point the British are like oh shit and they start retreating they run across wait the where's 2000 k from wouldn't it be good to have 2000 on like the the, the front line kind of where they was having a stare off because then they wouldn't push them you know what i mean bridge and start ripping the planks off of it as they go at which point the 2000 minute men and 700 british soldiers fire upon one another from either side of this bridge as the british continue to retreat the british now have to march wow. 18 miles back to their military stronghold in boston in their stupid high-vis red coats and every single american with a gun between there and boston is taking pop shots at them from the wood line wow this, like 26 red coats go missing 175 are wounded and 73 wait huh red coats boston is taking pop shots at them from the wood line during this retreat 26 redcoats go missing okay. 175 are wounded wow. and 73 are killed and three of them at least are from samuel whitmore so we cut back to samuel always oh, a samuel whitmore is actually there oh okay okay so he's there and he's oh wow okay whitmore, he's 78 years then at least are from samuel whitmore so we cut back to samuel whitmore he's 78 years old chilling at home presumably plowing something what we don't really know <laughs> and he just hears gunfire going off in the background and it's getting closer and closer and then he remembers oh that fucking kid woke me up last night in midnight told me the british were coming maybe that's what's going on so he goes he grabs his fancy french officer sword okay. both of his dueling pistols okay. and his musket and he goes out to the main road that the british would be marching past and he's gonna stand by the stone wall next to the main road and just wait for the fight to come to him like the complete badass that he is at this point all by the himself men are running up to check on this old man like hey what, what are you doing? You shouldn't be out here. And if you are going to try to do this kind of stuff, at least go out in the wood line or in like a second story window to hide yourself like the rest of us so you don't get yourself killed. To which Samuel Whitmore responds, and I quote, if I can only be the instrument for killing one of my country's foes, I shall die in peace. Which I think we can all agree <laughs> is gangster as fuck. At this point, this man is living- Yeah, I can't lie. Samuel, bro, he's actually so cool, man. The living embodiment of old man strength. He's just that old, grizzled, veteran Viking. I love it one more fight left in him and wants to die in battle so he can go to Valhalla. So he stays there, he loads his musket, he loads his pistols, and he waits. And he waits, and finally the British come marching right down the road 
dead at him. As they get close, he crouches down behind the stone wall with his musket and waits until they get to point blank range. And that's when he pops up over the wall, aims his gun. I said, get off my lawn now. And fires, immediately killing one red coat on the spot, okay. drawing both of his pistols, killing two more red coats, drawing his sword and charging into over 500 soldiers on his own. He Bro, Sam, 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 you are a badass, right? But what are you doing, bro? Why are you charging with a sword to 500 men? Oh, Sam, Sam, Sam. <laughs> Yo, this guy, hey, he's had enough of the plowing. He's had enough of the plowing. His kids are now raised, you know what I mean? He's happy, bro. He's going, he's going out with a bag. And charging into over 500 soldiers on his own. He is wow. then immediately shot in the face. Yep. He falls to the ground and is somehow still alive, so he reaches to grab one of his guns and start reloading it, at which point the British run up and stab him with bayonets Bruh. somewhere between six and 13 times. Apparently after the first five, they all kind of blend together. He is then clubbed in the head with the butt of a rifle and left for dead as his body lays there mangled and lifeless uh... as the British continue to march through the town on their way to Boston. Four hours later, the townspeople notice that his corpse starts moving. So they pick Samuel up, they get him over to the doctor, they alert the family, the family shows up to the doctor. He's not point, alive. The local town doctor, Nathaniel Tufts, is like, the dude is 78 years old. He wasn't prepared to handle a fall down the stairs, let alone getting stabbed 13 times and shot in the head. Okay, like there's no way this old man's gonna make it. But like I said, his family members start showing up. And Bro, how is he even still moving? Bro, how have you been shot in the face, stabbed 13 times, and you're still moving? And guess how many direct descendants Samuel Whitmore has at this point in time after all that plowing? Go ahead, give it a guess. Say it in your head. Okay, you got your number? 13. Okay, he's got 185 living descendants, huh? okay? He's got five generations beneath him. He's got kids, grandkids, great-grandkids, great-grandkids squared, um, and great- Bro, yo, Samuel's got his own army. The red coats are screwed, man, because Samuel's got his own army ready, bro. <laughs> <laughs> grandkids cubed 185 people showing up to the doctor like wow hey save grandpa at this point poor dr tufts is like I, pff, dude's gonna die but i'm not about to tell 180 grandkids <laughs> that so i'll try my best so he does what he can he bandages him up and sends him home with his family and they take care of him for the remainder of his days and when i say the remainder of his days what i mean is let me check my notes real quick uh, i mean that he passed on february 3rd 1793 this motherfucker lived for 18 more years and passed away at the age of 96 and took him bro who is this guy who is it how i i don't understand how yo I, I i'm not gonna lie i'm so happy that he did because i was so mad at the fact that like he served for the british helped them in war and then he was gonna die to the british for, for this reason, you know what I mean? So like that was that was annoying me, bro. So to go out like that was annoying. But the fact that he survived, got shot in the face, stabbed 13 times, doctor was like, yo, he's gonna die. Bro, like, like what? Commemorate Samuel Whitmore. There's actually a monument where he made his last stand. But wow. he said that he was 78 during his last stand and 96 when he died. And that clearly says that he was 98 when he died and 80 during his last stand. Why are you so dumb? <laughs> okay, look, I understand your point, And I also can kind of sort of read. And I realize the irony because this is literally written in stone. And I'm telling you that it's wrong, but it is wrong. <laughs> that is the only source that says that he was 98 when he died and 80 during his last stand. Every other source says that he was 78 and 96 okay this has been proven to be false multiple times but they don't want to change it because the monument's already so old so right yes i'm sticking with what i said but the most important part of this picture is to actually zoom in on the house in the background that's samuel whitmore's original house where he lived his entire life and it's oh, still no way. around today as a historical site in arlington massachusetts and that monument 
is in the front yard. So if you're not picking up what I'm wow. putting down, what I'm trying to tell you is, in conclusion, this has been the story of America's first and oldest gangster, a 78-year-old grizzled veteran that woke up on the first day of the American Revolutionary War and decided to casually go 3-0 while telling the entire British Empire to get off his lawn. Thank you for Bro, watching. Best way to support the channel. Let's go by that is such a badass story, man. Samuel Whitmore himself. Really cool. Really enjoyed that. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, make sure you have a thumbs up. Subscribe for more content. His link will be in the description. Make sure you go check him out. His storytelling is 10 out of 10. I absolutely love his videos. I'm live every single day on Twitch on TV. Forward slash Alfred G. If you guys want to check me out over there, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.